Hey everyone, I'm here with a quick video on Magic City. Magic City, the infamous strip club out there in Atlanta, Georgia, where everybody go, all A-listers, rappers, housewives, housewives and their hus husbands, the who's who can be found at Magic City out there in Atlanta. Well, Drake freaking the club so much, he decided to do a documentary, okay? And in that documentary, there's a story where at one time, Drake had an armored truck drive up the magic city to bring him a hundred K. Uh-huh. So he could truly make it rain up in the club. And a lot of the ladies in this documentary, they're saying, listen, it's a good deal. You can make, if you are that girl, six to eight K per night, just in tips. Now, I don't know what the other salary is, but I don't know too many jobs where in one night you could come home with six to $8,000. Oh, what a gig it is. But listen, I hope that they not only tell the money side, they tell the dark side. And you're like, D, well, what? What do you mean by the dark side? Oh, there's a dark side to that stripping. It's a dark side to the sex industry. It is a very dark side that many people don't want to tell about. They just want to tell you about the glitz and the glams and the Cardi B, who is like the 1% who not only made it out, but made it out and is making tons of money ever since. That she's a rare, she's a unicorn when it comes to that particular type of situation. So what's the dark side? The dark side is many of those men that freak in the club, they do not want to see a diva. No, they don't. They don't want to see diva with her gray hair. They don't want to see diva with her egg cup. They don't want to see diva with her booty that is not that big. No, they do not. They want to see the young chick. They want to see some big boobs. And they want to see some ginormous booties. Now, listen, there are a lot of girls who are born with the boobs, with the curves and all that. But then there are some that are not, and they want to dance. So what do they do? They go get them breast enhancements by the plastic surgeon. Some of them do it in the States. Most of them do it outside. They want to see, they go get the BBLs. They go get the liposuction. And none of them really want to tell you the, what happens after they get they, these things. You got to upkeep it. Sometimes the, the tissue around your boobs after you get the implants, you get all this scar tissue. Your boobs start to feel like a whole rock. Then you got to go back under the night and they got to try to clean it up and fix it up. Getting these illegal BBLs. Then you got stuff dripping all out your booty. Then you go to the doctor, you like, this hurt, that hurts. I got a lump here, a lump there. And they trying to figure out running all type of tests. And the issue is, or whatever they stuck in your booty and in your boobs. The darker, darker side of that story is a lot of these ladies get hooked on substances. So now, with your 6000 your 8000 your 10000 whatever money you made from this situation, was it really worth, worth it when you got to spend the rest of your life perhaps going in and out of rehab or sitting at a, a meeting trying to get a sponsor so you can make sure you don't trip and fall the rest of your life? There's a dark side, people. So it's called the Magic City. And I say, where's the magic when you're selling your soul to the double, your mind, and your body? Listen, guys, we're going to get more into this story right after this. Screen. 
So Neck and Ambition, how struggling salesman built world's most notorious strip club where celebs get 100K delivered in armor charts. Um, trucks. The racy dancer at Magic City earned up to six thousand a night in tips alone, with A-listers pictured making it rain in the club. So it's the most infamous strip club in the world, but it is also where some of America's most influential rappers made their names. And now Magic City is getting its own moment in the spotlight as rapper Drake has made a documentary about the legendary Atlanta venue. So there you got some of the ladies pictured there, big booties ready to work and make it rain, okay? You got the people rolling up with cash on top of cash on top of cash. Now, this is just me. I, I don't see, I, I can't see why people are so um, into seeing someone dance on the stage half naked, but I guess it is what it is, right? So struggling the phone sells, uh, man, um, Michael Barney, pitches second from the left, um, started the club, okay? So he's there. You got Jermaine Dupri in the, um, sort of in the middle there, and then you got the one who started the club, okay? The club was opened in 1995 by Tona Cartridge salesman Michael Barney, who played DJ, um, who, who played DJ Bearman and Bouncer, Barman and Bouncer, while his only dancer separated um, men from their money. But his friends didn't call him Mr. Magic for nothing. His slick talking sales pitch meant the celebrities soon come flocking. Superstar athletes like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and Shaquille, Shaquille O'Neal could rub shoulders with legendary music stars like Tupac, Biggie Small, CeeLo Green, MC Hammer, and Nelly. I mean, everybody was at that club. Over the years, the, clubs ha the club has survived an arson attack and is found to be in jail for federal drug conspiracy charges, but somehow it managed to retain its magic and is still going strong today. Rapper J Jermaine Dupri is the co-creator of the new documentary, described the club to Atlanta Magazine as a place where you can go on Monday night and stand beside a millionaire, the biggest thief in Atlanta, the biggest drug dealer in Atlanta, the police, and one of the biggest rappers or R&B artists in the world, all in the same room. Listen, when you're in like the corporate world, it is so hard for you as an individual to be in a place with all different players from all different levels. Most of the time when you have a corporate meeting and it's upper management, management that's who's usually in the room, upper management. Rarely will you see the top tier of management like the CEO um, and then all the way down to just the regular employee. But here, what they're saying for this magic city, this was a common place where it didn't matter your level, you could be standing next to a millionaire. And to be honest with you, because a lot of business happens on the golf course, right? And that's why they tell a lot of people in corporate, if you want to get in with the who's who, you need to learn how to golf. Because you may bump into somebody really important on the golf course. Well, uh, this is, forget the golf course. They saying go to Magic City. Because you can bump into millionaires, the police, politicians. That's where it's going down, okay? So you got the one world where you got to go on a golf course to get business done and to move up the ladder. Then you got this other world where you can go to Magic City in Atlanta and make things happen, okay? As Mr. Magic built his strip empire with more girls joining his team and musicians like Outkast testing their new music by watching the girls dance, the club gained a reputation as a place for people to party and up-and-coming music stars to try out their new tracks. DC The Brain Supreme was working at Magic City when he scored a smash as one half of tag team with Whoop, There It Is. As the celebrity started to frequent his club, Barney realized he had a hit on the magic formula. His club was a place where people wanted to be seen and be able to party with their idols. So that shows the article when the, um, he got arrested for um, dealing with um, the cold call. Okay? And then that's an article where somebody burnt it down. Okay, Probably somebody in the town was like, I'm sick of this sinners then being open and and people coming in and out all night 
and they went and burnt it down because they never found the person who um, burnt down the club when they burnt it down that time, but they did re rebuild it. Look at them just holding all these dollar bills and look at all the dollar bills everywhere in this picture. Good gosh almighty. I can understand how a lady, an individual, um, especially because listen, if you starting out and you're a college student, um, you can work Target 20 hours a week and maybe you'll come out with a check after two weeks and have a hundred and something dollars. And here you can go dance and you and then one night you clear that and then some. But in 1994, Barney was jailed for 10 years after being convicted of conspiracy to distribute cocoa and he sold the club to his brother-in-law, Derek Cooper. Then a year later, Magic City was gutted in an arson attack for which no one was ever charged. But it rose from the ashes to become the center of Atlanta's music scene once more. Now, I can't play any of these videos because of the nature of the videos and what's being seen in there. By the time Barney was released from prison in 2001, he found the club scene had moved in his favor. Rival clubs were closing and DJ Nando created Magic City Mondays, the most popular night of the week. There was a pay for play system where artists would pay strip club DJs to play their records so the artists and record execs could gauge the crowd's reaction. Nando played the records and the girls danced to them. The model beginning that if the girls in Magic City danced to it, you had a hit on your hands. But DJ Nando was shot in and on the lodge outside his home in 2014. Many thought Nano's death would mark the end for the Atlanta hip hop scene, but it was only getting bigger and Magic City was still its epicenter. A hundred K bills delivered in an armored truck and that was Drake, he said, bring me the money. And that night he made it rain up in Magic City. Um, Rihanna going to Magic City, but she's not the only one. They got people at the people at the people up there in the Magic City. And look at this cash. I've just never seen anything like it in my life. That's a lot of money. In 2018, rapper Future turned the club into Future City to celebrate his 35th birthday with his famous pals, including Drake, who was rumored to have had an armored truck deliver 100 k in cash to the strip club but the party was reportedly cut short at 3 a.m when pow pals were heard listen um here's the deal 3 a.m it was cut short i mean good gosh what they was gonna party to what time and when atlanta united fc won the msl cup the players of course chose magic city for their celebrations even chart queens madonna and rihanna have been spotted in the midst of the party palace Barney always said that the heart of his business was good customer service and the professionalism of his dancers, and they earned good money for it. A 2019 um, Channel 5 documentary on the sex business found that the hit maker dancers in Magic City were earning 78K a year and up to 6,000 a night in tips alone. But Barney ensured their roles were never to actually have intercourse, and the dancer became stars in their own rights. Jermaine Dupri, I just lost my space in. Jermaine Dupri, um, um, back when I was going at my early age, it was really about the dances. You know, the dances by name. You used to have white chocolate. You used to have those these girls who were almost stars before Instagram, by the way. Strawberry, Destiny. You used to go to the club to see these girls dance. Barney is pretty much semi-retired now, and the club is run by his son, little magic you can go on monday night and stand beside a millionaire the biggest thief in atlanta the biggest drug dealer in atlanta the police and one of the biggest rappers or r&b artists in the world all in the same room in recent years it has been beset by controversy once more at the series of pow powings well i mean when someone knows unfortunately that that much money is circulating in one building um things can go haywire but Mr. Magic himself, who rarely gives interviews, always wants to reflect on the good times, telling Atlanta Madis Magazine, I've been truly blessed. Even when I ran into trouble or I, had, um, or I had been spanked by life, I rebound. I believe this um, that rebounding is a blessing. And I just believe that I'm truly blessed. At my funeral, don't cry. I had a hell of a run. 
Ain't no need for no tears, man. I owe it to all the people. The people did it. It wasn't me. It was. It wasn't no magic behind it. So Magic City layout there. Um, Magic City first opened in 1995. Day shift admission is between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. With entry costs, and I guess about $8. The club shuts um, down at 3 a.m. They have no touching policy at the club. Bottles of booze cost between $58 and $785. Table dances cost, I'm sure, is they saying $8 per song? The strip club is also um, one of America's most popular chicken wing destinations. Former NBA Atlanta Hawks player Lou Williams has his own chicken wing named at them. In my mind, that means he spent a lot of cash there. Magic City employs more than 150 dancers. Hit song Whoop, There It Is by Tag Team was first um, trialed at Magic City. So now, now, now Magic City is a, is a test uh, playground for your music. Anywho, okay, Jermaine Debris, picture left, is the co-creator of the documentary. That's some of the girls there. And that's one of the girls holding all her money she made that night, okay? A staff member, show, a staff member shows some of the cash earned during Channel 5's investigation. Listen, guys, I'll tell you this. Um, I'm not a strip girl trick. Um, um, I said trick. I'm not a strip, a strip club chick. Chick is what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't get it, but many people, even like you know, a lot of times when people are about to get married, um, the men will have a stripper come, the ladies will have a stripper come. I don't get it. I don't see you know what's so fun about that. But that's me. Listen, and to each his own, right? This month, this club um, makes a lot of money, and apparently the girls make a lot of money. I just say to the girls, like, just be careful. Just be careful. Because with everything that unsparkles is in gold. Listen, guys, chat with me in the comments. And when I get an opportunity, I will chat back. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you will be notified. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. Everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget, hit the like button, chat with me, guys, and let me know, are you going to watch the documentary when it comes out? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.